Fidel Alejandro Castro Ruz was born on August 13, 1926, into a world marked by economic disparity and political upheaval. His father, Angel Castro Iarguiz, a Spanish immigrant, arrived in Cuba in 1906 after fighting in the Spanish army's futile attempt to maintain colonial control. Fidel's early life, though not indicative of the revolutionary force he would become, was shaped by the Jesuit-run schools of Santiago and Havana. As he navigated through his formative years, Fidel immersed himself in sports, excelling in baseball and basketball. His father's resilience and work ethic left an indelible mark on him, shaping the foundation for the unwavering determination that would define his future. The winds of change began to stir when Fidel entered Havana University in 1945. This academic journey would prove to be the crucible in which his political convictions were forged. Campaigning unsuccessfully for the presidency of the Student Federation, Fidel, in November 1946, delivered a scathing denunciation of the government's corruption and incompetence, capturing the attention of the nation. Graduating as a lawyer in 1950, Fidel Castro set up a practice in Havana's gritty slums, using his growing influence to speak out against the injustices he witnessed. His involvement in local radio stations and contributions to newspapers elevated his profile, setting the stage for his entry into national politics. The political landscape of 1950s Cuba was tumultuous, marked by the looming specter of General Fulgencio Batista. Fidel's nomination as a congressional candidate in the 1952 elections hinted at a promising political career. However, Batista's military coup on March 10, 1952, abruptly halted the electoral process, thrusting Fidel into the maelstrom of political resistance. Faced with a closed legal avenue to challenge Batista, Fidel Castro made a fateful decision to abandon peaceful means and embrace the path of revolutionary struggle. The clandestine network he established, known as the Movement, El Movimiento, marked the inception of a journey that would shape the destiny of Cuba. In July 1953, Fidel Castro, fueled by revolutionary zeal, orchestrated a daring attack on the Moncada barracks outside Santiago de Cuba. Intending to kickstart the revolution with a heroic demonstration of determination, the ill-fated assault turned into a fiasco. The government's brutal response led to the capture and imprisonment of Fidel and surviving rebels. The trial of Fidel Castro and his compatriots in September 1953 became a dramatic spectacle that captivated the nation. Fidel, knowing the court would find him guilty, used the trial as a platform to deliver a speech, famously concluding with the words, La historia me absolvera, history will absolve me. Sentenced to 15 years, Fidel served only two before being released and exiled to Mexico. In the smoky halls of revolutionary fervor in Mexico, Fidel Castro forged a crucial alliance with the iconic Ernesto Che Guevara. The camaraderie between these two revolutionary figures would play a pivotal role in the events that unfolded in the years to come. Assembling a group of exiles, Fidel embarked on a plan to overthrow the Batista regime. The clandestine training and organization were not without challenges, and tensions escalated as Batista's forces increased pressure on the Cuban conspirators in Mexico. In the pre-dawn hours of November 25, 1956, an overloaded and unseaworthy vessel named the Grama set sail from Tuxpan, Mexico. Packed with 82 men, including Fidel Castro, Che Guevara, and their revolutionary dreams, the Grama became a symbol of audacity and determination. Despite the vessel's inadequacies and the inherent challenges of the mission, Fidel's unshakable belief in the success of the revolution prevailed. The Grandma's landing, delayed and misplaced, led to a deadly confrontation with Batista's forces, resulting in the survival of only 18 of the 81 revolutionaries. Undeterred by the setback, Fidel Castro, Che Guevara, and a handful of survivors retreated to the Sierra Maestra Mountains, determined to build a guerrilla army. 
Batista's ineptitude played into their hands as the demoralized government forces struggled to contain the burgeoning insurgency. Over the next two years, the rebels launched guerrilla attacks, slowly gaining support from a populace disillusioned with Batista's regime. The revolutionary tide, fueled by the indomitable spirit of Fidel and his comrades, eventually led to the collapse of the Batista regime on December 31, 1958. On January 9, 1959, Fidel Castro entered Havana, triumphant in his revolutionary quest. The victory marked the culmination of years of struggle and sacrifice. However, the romanticized notion of a nationalist hero coming to power obscured the underlying complexities of Castro's vision for Cuba. As Castro assumed various roles within the government, consolidating power, he began to strengthen ties with the Soviet Union. The Cold War tensions that defined the 1950s and 60s escalated, leading to strained relations with the neighboring United States. In April 1961, the Bay of Pigs invasion, orchestrated by the United States to overthrow Castro's government, proved to be a resounding failure. The Cuban exiles, supported by the US, were swiftly defeated by Castro's forces. The failed invasion, however, intensified Castro's alignment with the Soviet Union. The Cuban Missile Crisis in October 1962 brought the world to the brink of nuclear war. The discovery of Soviet ballistic missiles in Cuba prompted a tense standoff between the US and the Soviet Union. After 13 days of brinkmanship, Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev agreed to withdraw the missiles, avoiding a catastrophic conflict. With the revolution firmly established in Cuba, Fidel Castro dispatched Che Guevara as a roving revolutionary. Guevara's attempts to foment revolution in the Congo and later in Bolivia, where he met his tragic end in 1967, highlighted Castro's commitment to exporting his revolutionary ideals. Che Guevara's image became an immortal symbol of the Cuban Revolution, plastered on walls and posters across the nation. While Castro's Cuba was perceived as a Soviet proxy force by the US, documents released post-Soviet dissolution revealed that Castro pursued his agenda independently on the global stage. As Cuba navigated the complexities of the Cold War, the nation's economy became increasingly dependent on subsidies from the Soviet Union. All economic decisions were centralized, with Fidel Castro at the helm. However, his lack of economic expertise resulted in a languishing Cuban economy. While Castro projected an image of frugality, testimonies from defectors suggested that his personal lifestyle mirrored that of the overthrown General Batista. The Cuban government guaranteed employment for its citizens, but the economic foundation relied on Soviet support. The fall of the Soviet Union in 1991 sent shockwaves through the global geopolitical landscape, and Cuba was not immune. The sudden loss of Soviet subsidies plunged the island nation into an economic crisis, prompting Castro to adapt. Faced with the harsh realities of a changing world, Castro reluctantly relaxed some government controls on the economy, allowing limited free enterprise. The regime also permitted Cubans to emigrate if they desired. Despite these adaptations, Castro maintained a grip on political dissent, ensuring that the one-party system endured. Fidel Castro's legacy is as complex as the revolution he led. From 1959 to 2008, he defied the United States, suppressed dissent, and navigated the turbulent waters of the Cold War. Despite economic hardships and international confrontations, his unwavering self-confidence and political acumen sustained his rule. On November 25, 2016, Fidel Castro passed away, leaving behind a nation shaped by his vision. From the heights of revolutionary triumph, to the depths of economic struggle, Cuba bore witness to the force of one man's unyielding self-belief. Fidel Castro, a figure of controversy and charisma, etched his name in Cuban history, 